Mel from PCOS Breakthrough here to dissolve PCOS's five biggest myths. Let's start with my favorite. Number one, sugar is bad for you. Sugar, that's the saddest happy face I think I've ever drawn. Did you know that sugar is your number one and prefer your body's number one preferred energy store? Which means when you cut it out of your diet, you're making the body work harder to access these energy stores. Now, I understand it's confusing, especially with things like insulin resistance and weight loss thrown in the mix. And people just start throwing around that, yep, sugar is the best way to control these things. But it's actually not. The best method is to learn how to eat sugar and other carbohydrates throughout constant, consistently throughout the day to support your body rather than starve it. Myth number two, exercise. Exercise helps with PCOS symptoms. Again, it can help on some cases with symptoms, things like fluid retention, pain management, and even weight loss. But if the idea behind PCOS restoration and control is to regulate your period, is to reduce the body's inflammation markers is to just bring a little bit control a little bit more of control and reduce those stress hormones exercise especially high intensity exercise is not going to help these situations and is not going to help you restore a regular period myth number three acne You can buy all the creams in the world. You can attend all of the microneedling or laser appointments to help with your skin condition. But if you're not treating the underlying cause, you are not going to help your acne. Acne is caused by our buildup of waste in our system that then comes out through our skin. Now, many people are gonna argue that it is a skin inf infection, but that infection comes from somewhere and essentially it comes from inside us. And so if we don't deal with the underlying cause of our acne, we're not going to deal with the, the our sores on our faces and over our body. Now you can kind of see, I do have a little bit of scarring still from my acne and that's from years of picking and prodding and expensive skincare. But as I said, it wasn't until I understood the systems behind it and how to treat it that I finally got control of my acne and now don't even wear makeup on my skin. Myth number three, the pill. The pill is not regulating your period. So the myth there is that the pill does regulate. So I'm here to tell you it doesn't. The pill does not regulate your period. The pill brings on a fake bleed. Now, where this first came from. In the 60s, when the pill was first brought out and released to women, um, because there was no bleed, they actually thought they were pregnant, even though they absolutely weren't, because the pill stops um, fertility. And so they, they, the women that first went on it in the 60s thought that they were pregnant. And so to convince them and their husbands that they were not pregnant, the scientists that invented the pill actually brought in that synthetic and that um, fake bleed so that they thought they weren't pregnant or so that they could confirm that they weren't pregnant. So yeah, myth, myth busted. The pill does not make you have a period. Again, when we have PCOS and we see people that bleed for really long periods of time or have really uncomfortable bleeds or go without, go for long periods without having a real period, I can understand that it seems like a comforting thing to have that regular interval of bleeding, but it's not a real bleed and you are actually pushing your recovery further and further down the track. Like with the acne, the best way that you can, the best and quickest way that you can control your period and start to have a regular period is to again, understand the underlying cause and actually start with number one, start by eating consistently, fueling and nourishing your body and let those energy systems balance out so that you can start having a regular and relatively pain-free period. Myth number five, your body is broken. Something is wrong with you. So myth busted, I want you to repeat this after me. Your body is not broken. Uh, 
I hope none of you are assessing me on my handwriting skills because they're terrible. So yes, repeat after me, your body is not broken. Your body is actually trying to tell you something. It's trying to tell you to listen to it. Whatever your symptoms are, it is saying, hey, I love you. Will you please love me back and pay me attention? Think of a little newborn baby. When the newborn baby cries, it often cries because it needs rest or it needs food. We're not so dissimilar. If something's happening, if there's a cry happening, we're either in a highly, a highly stressed state and we do need a little bit of rest or we're not fueling ourselves efficiently and therefore it's our body's cry for help. If you want more help understanding what is happening with your symptoms and in turn your body, feel free to either drop a comment below or click the link above and pop your details in. What the link above does is enters your details for a breakthrough call. So you and I are gonna get on the phone, discuss your symptoms, and hopefully put a plan together to start resolving these symptoms today. So what are you waiting for? Click the link, enter your details, or like I said, pop a comment below. I look forward to speaking to you soon.